Good. Hi, everybody. I'm Matthias Riffel. I'm a research engineer from Disney Research Zurich in Switzerland. And I'm going to show you um, one of our projects. It's called Augmented Creativity. And um, we have spent almost two years in uh, researching, prototyping, and developing these cool, innovative uh, prototypes of uh, augmented reality application. And I will present some to you. So uh, augmented, pretty clear. Why creativity? Um, so uh, creative play uh, is an important aspect of children development. And kids need to touch, tinker with things, and explore. And this active discovery contributes to a rich and memorable childhood, and also gives a lot of problem-solving skills, especially uh, physical interaction with the surroundings, like coloring, touching, hearing, is a really critical component of this experiential learning. However, a lot of prepackaged content and digital devices especially have become more and more popular, and uh, children spend a lot of time just absorbed in digital world consuming content. So, and very often, this content is not like, doesn't offer much in terms of creativity or educational value. Think, for example, Candy Crush, Farmville, well, fun games, but I mean, just for the kid is not so, uh, doesn't give much expansion to their creativity. So, augmented reality has a really unique potential to impact this situation. So it can provide a bridge between the real world and the digital activities. So we have rebranded this concept of enhancing uh, interaction, discovery, uh, exploration and imagination in the real world through AR as augmented creativity. Uh, in terms of research, academical research has, some work has been done in this, in this uh, topic, but not so much. So for example, just we'll cite the magic book was an early example, the first one, uh, integrating virtual reality into a book. And yeah, the reading experience is enhanced by 3D scenes overlaid over the book pages. Uh, similarly, the haunted book was a follow-up to this. And another interesting one is the last one, the music table, where uh, this project AR is used to support creativity music. And the musician can control a music production software by using various AR markers on a table. Um, so augmented creativity spans in multiple domains because creativity is literally everywhere. So we included seeing, hearing, feeling, uh, moving, uh, exploring, imagining, and learning. And for each one of these six domains, uh, I'm going to present a prototype application. Some of these applications are published. Uh, one of them is a product, actually. Uh, Others are becoming products, and some are just new. And um, for each one of them, I'm going to focus on the perspective of creativity, educational value, and potential impact they can bring. First one is the coloring book. Uh, coloring books capture the imagination of children, and they provide them with one really early opportunity for creative expression. And this is especially interesting uh, in our context of augmented creativity. So in an app, you can bring your favorite characters to life. You start for a from a traditional coloring book page, um, and through the talent that we can recognize the page, the 3D character, the corresponding 3D character is shown on the page in AR, but the beginning is blank. So as the child colors, the coloring is captured from the page and texture on the character. So in the video, uh, you will see an example. Someone is coloring the template, and the 3D figure gets colored. And uh, the nice thing is there are other applications that do this thing in the market, but ours differs in many technical aspects. Uh, for example, we cap transfer the texture in real time. So as you color, you can really see the color um, expanding on you know, the 3D character. And uh, instead of just stretching the texture or copying the texture, as other applications usually do, um, we use a smart way of reconstructing the texture with synthesis. And we do this synthesis in the mesh space of the character. And so it's nicely wrapped around the character. 
and uh, even solve the seams. So the result is a complete seamless painted 3D character. In addition, we develop a surface, deformable surface tracking algorithm. It's able to run on tablets because one of our motivation was, well, we're gonna do coloring books and coloring books, the page, you color is fine, then the page is banned. And when you want to have a clear refer reference between the color and your virtual marker, if the page is bent and the tracker is flat, well, you have a problem. And uh, for all the technical details about this work, uh, we publish a paper. So to wrap up the coloring book app in the concept of augmented creativity, um, the app lets kids express their creativity by drawing and therefore using their imagination and enhances the sense of connection to the character. Um, it motivates kids to color more and more and explore their work in 3D, and this provides, provides also some educational value. And in addition, opens a lot of new opportunities in the field of augmented reality gaming. For example, you could color your own character in a video game, or even color the whole levels or the whole elements of the levels, or even define behaviors of the character by scripting through colors. For example, you paint your mage red, it's gonna be a fire mage, or you paint it blue, it's gonna be ice magic. Next one is about music. So music is a really important aspect of child development and human life in general. And beside the experiment with the music table I showed before, not much work has been done combining augmented reality and music. So we have developed this application where you combine the endless creativity of music, the music offers, with the intuitive spatial interaction of AR. So with Rap, the concept is you can rearrange existing song by using different styles and different instruments. And you don't have to be a musician or an artist. Anyone can just simply start by combining these instruments in a very, very intuitive way. Uh, it's intuitive because there is no virtual interface. So to arrange the song, you're given a collection of physical markers. Each one represents a specific instrument for a specific style. And by placing the marker on the table, as you see in the image, we show the augmented version of the instrument and the corresponding audio track is played. So for example, you see a set of Latin uh, instruments and a set of rock instruments. And as the song plays, you can start with Latin piano and Latin drums, then switch instrument and play and recreate the song in, in infinite ways. Of course, the chords and the tempo of all the instruments is the same, so you don't risk getting a strange result. Uh, the interesting thing is with AR, by moving the instrument closer or further away from the camera, you can control the volume of the single instrument and by moving left and right, you can control the panning. And this is very intuitive. And here is an example. This application has strong creative and educational aspects. So you can recreate your favorite song in a lot of different ways, imagine them like in other styles and combine and play with instruments. And this uh, teaches you, I mean, teaches the kid about music styles, how a song can be rearranged in different styles and with different instruments. As for the potential impact, we see, for example, an extended version, like a standard multiple version, where you can control a whole orchestra and every player control different sections. And this work has been also a kickstart for different research projects, especially in the animation domain at our lab. Next one is physical interaction game. So pervasive games, uh, we have done a lot of experimentation with pervasive gaming in general. 
And the uh, thing is, the interaction components in computer games are very often limited to the screen, mouse, keyboard, or gamepad. So you sit in front of your TV and, well, just sit there. And you remove from, like, interaction with other physical interaction with the world and other players. So we created a team-oriented physical interaction AR game. And this is how it works. So there is a cube, cubicle marker in the center of the room. Could be a cylinder, too. And uh, in the game, so, <coughs> sorry, uh, aliens are coming out from this cube or jumping out, and you have to stop them by physically run with your tablet in front of them. But here is the trick. You can only attack the aliens that match your own color, and it's a multiplayer game. So this requires cooperation and coordination through the players, especially as the game goes on, it gets faster and faster and faster to the point it's frenetical, and so you, risk, you, you have to come up with strategies to, to solve this. Um, we also included uh, different reality mixes, mixing techniques in this project, such as um, capturing the artifacts and motion blur and assembling the motion blur from the device and applying this to the virtual objects so they match much better within the camera. And for all the details about this, I remind to the paper. So uh, here is the game's look like. So in the concept of augmented creativity, this game makes you find strategies to cooperate and coordinate with your team. Uh, closes the gap between virtual and physical real interaction and teaches cooperation and communication. And of course, you practice your movement skills. And the potential impact, bear the potential impact to affect relationship between players, helping team building, and it's quite fun to play. Um, we stay in the pervasive gaming and we go in the citywide gaming. So home and reality holds the potential of new way of interacting uh, and exploring cities. For example, you can overlay interactive elements in top of buildings, structures, uh, road signs, and um, created a multitude of games you can play everywhere in a city. However, building citywide AR game is challenging, it's not easy. So to aid developers, we are creating a citywide gaming framework. So our framework focuses on scavenger hunt games. The players are sent on a quest, and um, they have to visit different locations along a path. They can use clues, hints, to find these locations, and once they find, they have to solve a puzzle to find a treasure. And you see some examples in the images. Uh, we have run an hackathon at a game festival in Zurich, the Ludicious Game Festival. And the teams were asked to develop uh, mini, small scavenger hunt games. We gave them a location and they had to come up with a game. And then we combined all the game into a single app and we distributed this app during the event. <coughs> uh, here is an example of someone trying to solve the puzzles on a building facade. And hackathons are always like really nice ways to come up with cool concepts. So many teams developed just puzzles. Many other teams went further and uh, kind of overlay the virtual facade of the building, for example, where you could throw stuff and crash the windows. So to wrap up, uh, novice developers and amateur developers are given a gentle introduction into city-wide gaming. And to simplify the task of creating such games. Uh, on the educational side, of course, it teaches uh, how to build such a games uh, as it provides a well-documented and easy-to-use framework. And the players are also provided with a playful tool to discover uh, the cultural background of the city, for example. And potential impact, well, you can see 
just a few changes in the framework, and you can come up with a multitude of city-wide AR games. Uh, next one is about nonlinear interactive story authoring. So authoring stories needs a large spectrum of creative thinking. Uh, in interactive AR narratives, users are immersed in virtual worlds and virtual stories, but they can influence the storylines. So, however, authoring such stories is a really complex task. Much more complex than a linear story, which is already hard. But you must define every possible interaction at every specific time in the story. For example, this guy wants to create a story with two bears. He has some interaction possibility like uh, touching, shaking, <coughs> swiping around, placing new markers in the scene, for example, the honeypot. <coughs> And, sorry, um, the problem is it needs to define all the possible interaction. What about if the bears are chatting and you place the honeypot? Or, I mean, it's, it's, it's a multitude of, of things to take care of, and also conflict may arise. So, therefore, we have built an authoring framework that facilitates the creation of such stories. It also supports uh, the author with tools, autom automation tools, to help resolving conflicts that may arise. And we focus on AR since it provides the reader with the very intuitive way of um, interacting with the story. For example, the characters know where you are because you're looking at them. They know if you're looking at them or looking at, I mean, and they connect directly into you. And also it's, it's much easier just to have a tablet, touch something, or recognize something that interact with the story with a mouse and keyboard is not as immersive. And um, also, again, for the results and exp experiments we run about this, we publish a paper. So you can see an example here of a little story was created with a framework. There are two bears, they follow their own storyline, but at any time you can influence the story by adding new elements. For example, you can influence the story drastically by adding bees that are gonna chase like crazy the bears around. So they're gonna stop doing what they do, they, they run away until you stop the bees by placing a flower. Or you can, just, um, you can just bend the story a little by, for example, distracting them while they're trying to have a conversation. You can pet one and it's gonna giggle or there are a lot of things you can come up. So, uh, back to augmented creativity. Uh, our framework makes it easier to create and author complex stories, complex interactive stories. Uh, the AR integration makes the story interaction much more natural than using traditional mouse, keyboard, or gamepad. It teaches concepts about story authoring and especially nonlinear story authoring. It uh, opens a new host of interaction possibilities for such stories and also serves as a bridge between virtual content and real world. This last one is about edutainment robots. Uh, there are many edutainment robots around. They can improve the skills of children in computational thinking while having fun. And for quite some time now, uh, they have been used to teach children, children how to program. Uh, in the framework we propose, <coughs> that we're proposing the child behavior, uh, a child programs the behavior of a robot uh, with event-based programming. So pairing events linked to an actions. For example, uh, this means left sensor sees something, turn the robot right. Push the button, turn, turn on the red light. However, in previous publications, we, the one uh, teaching core concept through robotics, uh, we show that most of the kids can solve the problem, but they don't get a deep understanding of what happened and when, because they don't understand exactly when this event occurred and when they had been executed. So to overcome this problem, we added an AR component to visualize what the robot is thinking and to improve the understanding. So we can track the robot while it's moving and doing his stuff, and what he will do, he will drop events behind him as it's executing them. And you can browse this event with a tablet through a timeline and basically debug the problem. And um, the results, again, of these experiments and user tests 
uh, resulted in a publication. So in the video, you can see the vents are being spawned behind the robot as he goes. And here is when you can browse when, and every event is a combination of uh, event and action, and don't mind the octopus. So, uh, creative goal. Uh, you can create user-defined behavior for robots, virtual agents. Kids can learn to program. Um, educates kids about core computer science concepts. And AR plays an important role we show in this deep comprehension by making the dynamics of the execution visible and tangible. As for the potential impact, well, since you learn to program something, possibilities are endless. I started at 10 and still going. So to wrap up, well, I show you six prototypes. Uh, they explore and develop the concept of augmented creativity in different ways and through different ways of interaction, but they have common points. So they all enhance real world activities. They cultivate creativity through AR and especially through AR interactivity. They foster education on many different levels. And finally, they open further possibilities in the field of augmented reality gaming, uh, augmented reality interaction, as well as many research questions for the future. So I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you. And I'm open for questions. So to access the tool, so, um, uh, well, you can read the papers for all the details, algorithm, and whatever we have used, but we won't distribute the source code or the tools are actually being developed internally. Uh, the CDY Gaming actually has been uh, uh, published, yeah, in a context of a European Commission project we participated. Yeah, the coloring book is available. It's called Disney Color and Play. Yeah, through Disney, yeah. And we're working to promote also the music apps for different contexts. It's a really cool way of... Oh, I don't know how they're gonna monetize this. I cannot speculate about this. But I just developed the stuff and hope it gets... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is, I, I should check. I think it's available, yeah. Maybe just Google, like, CDY or Disney CDY. No, probably not Disney because, um, well, it's complicated. But um, um, it was uh, publicated through a project. It's called uh, FI Content. It was an European Commission-funded project about uh, pervasive gaming. And in this context, we publish. And uh, the, we have a GitHub repository with the source of that. Sorry, again. So, hmm. I don't know, the, the coloring book is really successful, I think, because everyone we show and test said as this direct connection with the character as he comes alive of his painting and in real time. Um, it's hard to, 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 to answer this because they're quite different in different domains. And uh, so, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, we did different user tests on different aspects. Depends on uh, which one, but uh, yeah, we did so. You? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. That's, that's I think, the, the problem within this game is this. Uh, when you show it to kids or young people, they get it really fast. Because the main thing is you still need to point at this cube in the center of the room. Well, when you show it to, uh, like, uh, people less used to pervasive gaming, they, it's harder. You have to really explain what you have to do. And that's, that's the problem of the game, yeah. But I don't see how you could solve this because, yeah, you cannot definitely have it in virtual reality because it's going to be a mess. <laughs> But still, with phones and small tablets, it's still quite easy to, to play. Yeah, it's not too interfering too much. For the moment, no, as uh, I mean, we kind of ended this project when we text transfer to, uh, I think it was Disney Publishing that published the game. But we, we still have this thread open, like, so especially we have this surface tracking, which opens a lot of possibilities. And we want to explore this further. But for the, for the connection with the character, this we tested through user tests. So we made the kids and uh, young people color and then we ask questions. And this resulted that everyone was feeling more connected to the character somehow. Sorry? So our, our primary goal of Disney research is um, combining academical research with research that can be used in uh, all within the business unit in Disney. So from the parks to uh, Disney Interactive, uh, uh, animation. The goal is to use the technology in that approach. Yeah, the goal is combined this. So uh, a researcher has the funds to, to pursue his research, and he can publish papers. But yeah, and Disney will gain also from it, because many cool things are being developed. And they can actually become products or tools just for for animators or whatever. So they end up in the wild space, potentially? Sorry? The tools might end up in the wild space, potentially? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this happened frequently, yeah. Well, uh, I think. I, I cannot really answer this, but uh, what I notice, just from my perspective, is you tend to color and print more and more pages to see all the possible results of the possible, com especially because the thing is we uh, recreate with texture synthesis. So synthesis is a bit creative in a computer way sometimes, and the results may change. So I think there is more uh, potential even like replayability than uh, a uh, special uh, normal coloring book. You wouldn't buy the book again. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, it's one animation. Well, well one, one character per page, and uh, you can a bit, I think, in the app interact a bit with them. 